Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this morning's webinar. My name is Patty Urena, and I am the Assistant Director of Education and Outreach at Achieve a Family Trust. And we're really excited to have this program for you this morning. And um, before we get started, though, I just have a couple of housekeeping items I'd like to go over. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box, and we will be monitoring that throughout the presentations, but we will take questions after each section. So, um, you know, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of each presentation. I will send out the slides from the presenters later today, and this webinar should be online at our website by the end of the week. Um, I encourage you, you know, to visit our website if you, you know, if you want to go back to it or, or share it with some friends or family members that weren't able to attend this morning. So um, again, I'm really, we're really excited to have this program this, mo uh, this morning. We have two excellent programs that we're going to share information with you on. One is Pennsylvania ABLE, and the other one is Fund My Future Pittsburgh. But let's get started with Pennsylvania ABLE. And uh, this morning we have Diana Fishlock. And I, I did want to mention also, we do have a parent who's going to share her experience with using both of these programs and how they've worked for her and her family. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Diana Fishlock from the Pennsylvania Treasury Department. Thank you so much, Patty. And thank you everyone for attending this morning. I appreciate being able to talk with you. Let's see if I can get my slide forward. There we go. Um, I'm an outreach specialist with the Pennsylvania Treasury Department's Bureau of Consumer Programs. I'm also a mom of two teenagers with disabilities. Um, so we have ABLE at home too. My heat is kicking on and it has weird noises. So if you hear weird noises, it's probably at my house, not at your house. <laughs> Um, in today's overview, I will talk about um, what ABLE is, who is eligible, how to open and manage an account, and a few additional rules for people receiving SSI. An ABLE account is a savings and investment product for people with disabilities and their families to use for qualified disability-related expenses. One of the most significant features of ABLE accounts is that funds in the account are not counted when determining eligibility for any federal means-tested benefit, with some limitation for SSI. Also, the savings get great federal and state tax advantages. Through ABLE, for the first time, many individuals with disabilities can save for a more secure future without uh, jeopardizing their benefits and they control their own funds if they're able to. PA ABLE also gives a number of investment options to the person managing the funds and um, the ABLE funds can be used for a wide variety of expenses. ABLE stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience. ABLE was signed into federal law in 2014 and that enabled the states to open their own ABLE programs if they wish. Um, Pennsylvania's ABLE program began in April 2017, so ours is almost six years old now. Pennsylvania's has been one of the fastest growing ABLE programs in the country with a proven track record. Um, more than 7,200 account owners have saved more than $100 million in assets in PA ABLE. So as I mentioned, with an ABLE account, you can save while maintaining your government benefits. The federal law says that assets uh, in an ABLE account and qualified withdrawals from the account are not counted in determining eligibility for any federal means-tested benefits with some limitation for SSI. Also, PA ABLE assets are not counted against Pennsylvania-based benefits having to do with um, health, disability, or student financial aid. This is extremely important because without ABLE, it was very limited how much individuals could, individuals with disabilities could save and still receive their government benefits. For example, traditionally SSI recipients could save only $2,000 in assets without jeopardizing their benefits. Now, in addition to that $2,000, they can save up to $100,000 in an ABLE account, which can make a huge difference, giving the person the ability to save for a house or a car or just everyday expenses. 
If they go above that $100,000 threshold, SSI benefits will be suspended but not terminated. And ABLE account owners who don't receive SSI can save more than half a million dollars in an ABLE account. An individual can have only one ABLE account nationwide. While you may see information from other states, Pennsylvania's ABLE program has several PA-specific benefits. These are only available to Pennsylvanians if they use the PA ABLE program. Please note that some states' ABLE programs use confusing advertisements and marketing initiatives that may mislead you to believe that they represent um, Pennsylvania. If you open one of these non-Pennsylvania ABLE accounts, you may be missing out on critical PA disability and tax benefits. So if you wanna make sure that you're with Pennsylvania, look for the PA ABLE logo, which you can see on this slide, it's blue and green and it's shaped a little bit like a license plate. Um, also, you can um, make sure that you go to paable.gov rather than to another website. And if you're from a disability organization or support group, you can um, get free brochures there and other materials. So let's talk a little bit about the tax benefits. Contributions to a Pennsylvania ABLE account are eligible for both state and federal tax benefits. Contributions to a Pennsylvania ABLE may be deducted from state taxable income up to $17,000 per person per year. Again, only, to, only contributions to the Pennsylvania ABLE account qualify for the Pennsylvania um, state income tax deduction. So just uh, a few times throughout the presentation, I'll use my family as an example. Um, so I can put up to $17,000 in my children's accounts this year, and I can deduct that $17,000 um, from my state taxable income, which is uh, really wonderful. Um, there's also no state or federal income tax on PA ABLE account earnings while the funds are in the account um, or even when they're taken out as long as they're used for qualified disability expenses. And I'll talk about what those are in just a moment. Let's look at who's eligible to have an ABLE account. There are two aspects that go into eligibility the first is the age of onset of the disability, and the second is the severity of the disability itself. So the onset of the qualifying disability must happen before the person's 26th birthday. So if my disability was something like Down syndrome, of course I was born with that. But if I was in a bad car accident, it would be important whether that happened when I was 20 or whether it happened when I was 30. It doesn't matter what age I am now, and it doesn't matter what age I received the correct diagnosis, as long as the disability started before age 26. The second factor is the disability itself. So um, if an individual is eligible to receive supplemental security income or social security disability insurance, then they automatically qualify for an ABLE account. But there is another option for people who don't have enough work history for SSDI and for people who don't qualify for SSI, and that's called self-certification. So with self-certification, in addition to the onset of the disability being by age 26, the person with the disability must have a written disability-related diagnosis from a physician who meets Social Security Administration criteria saying that the person has a physical or mental impairment that results in marked and severe functional limitation and is expected to last for at least 12 months. That's because these are um, very specialized uh, accounts and they are to help a specific group. So not just anybody is eligible for these um, tax savings and benefits protection, it really is for a limited audience um, of people with uh, more serious and long-term disabilities. So how do you open an account? Um, most people find that the easiest way is to go online. Um, you can go to paable.gov and click on enroll. Um, completing that enrollment process takes about 15 minutes 
And it's a lot like opening a bank account or a, a credit card online. In Pennsylvania, we also give people the option to fill out a paper application if they're more comfortable with that. Um, you can print that out from our website or you can call our number 855-529-2253 and request a paper application, which we will mail to your house. There are some unique features on account control and these rules were recently updated. So adults with the legal capacity to enter into a contract, um, they used to um, need to open the account themselves. Now they certainly can open the account themselves or they can appoint any other person of their choosing to open and manage the account on their behalf. That person would be called an authorized individual. Um, if the person with the disability is younger than 18, or lacks the legal capacity to enter into a contract, um, then the ABLE account must be opened by an authorized individual. Um, the federal government recently um, created a hierarchy of priority. Um, so people, um, <laughs> the authorized individual um, is in a defined order of priority based on their relationship to the person with the disability. So um, federal regulations um, limit who can be an authorized individual to a person who lacks capacity or is under age 18. Um, to people in this order, a person with power of attorney, a legal guardian or conservator, a spouse, a parent, a sibling, a grandparent, or a social security administration representative payee. Let's talk about how to contribute to an ABLE account. There are lots of ways to make contributions. Um, you can write a paper check, you can use a money order or an electronic fund transfer. Um, you can put money in occasionally or have funds put into a, a PA ABLE account regularly through an existing bank account or through your payroll where you work. Um, and that that is uh, available to the person with a disability or any family member or friend. So if I wanted to put money into your ABLE account um, every time I get paid, I could set it up with my payroll um, to put a certain amount in, of funds in your account every time I got paid. If you receive SSI or SSDI monthly benefits, you, <coughs> pardon me, you may direct those into your PA ABLE account as a direct deposit. Um, the only people who cannot do that are people with a representative payee. We do ask that each contribution be at least $25 and the federal law limits the amount that can be contributed this year to $17,000. And that's true no matter how many people are making contributions. Um, so if, if if I had an ABLE account and I was the only person contributing, I could put $17,000 in this year. But if all of us um, who are meeting this morning were contributing to the same ABLE account, all of us as a whole or all of us as a group could put in $17,000, not each of us. Um, I sort of think of it as a bowl, the ABLE account as a bowl, and that bowl can hold $17,000. Um, Let's see, anyone at all can contribute to the account as long as they provide basic information. Um, another, two other ways that people can contribute. Um, one is Ugift, which is a free online service, a little bit like PayPal. So um, if you wanted to allow someone to contribute, but you didn't wanna to have to share your, your account number, um, you could give them a Ugift code. Um, also, families can roll over a 529 college and career savings account into an ABLE account, and people can do that with absolutely no tax implications, which is really wonderful. Um, if I had a college and career savings account that was worth, say, $30,000, I would need to roll that over into ABLE over two different years because of that $17,000 cap. So there is an exception to the $17,000 cap and it's called Able to Work. So the Able to Work Act adds some nice flexibility for some people who are working. 
um, allowing them to contribute more than the $17,000 limit. Um, the amount extra that they can put in is whichever of these is less, either the amount that they earned this, uh, this calendar year or the federal poverty level for the prior year. Um, so the most that a person could put in under able to work um, this year would be $30,590. Um, so the person who qualifies for that needs to uh, have not contributed during this uh, calendar year to a defined contribution plan, like a 401k, an annuity contract, or a deferred compensation plan. I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. Um, PA ABLE has seven investment options. There are six asset allocation options that you can see on this slide. And there's also a checking account, which I'll talk about on the next slide. You can direct your investments to any one of these or any combination up to all seven if you wish. Every time you put money in, you can put it in the same investments or you can switch it up and do it differently every time. So as you can see on this slide, the asset allocation funds um, are all based on stocks, excuse me, all, um, all comprised of stocks and bonds and cash. They range from conservative to aggressive. Um, they have pretty low annual fees of less than 1%. They range from 0.3 to 0.33% annually. I'm going to take a look. Oh, you can also find out more about any of these accounts by going to our Frequently Asked Questions um, tab on our website. And you can find out each account's strategy, objective, um, and performance over time. PA ABLE checking is offered through Fifth Third Bank NA, but account owners enroll in ABLE checking account via our website or paper application, just like they would with any of the other investment options. The checking account is FDIC insured up to the $250,000 limit, and it comes with a free debit card. Uh, using your card is free if you use an in-network machine, and uh, if you use an out-of-network machine, it's $2.75 per use. You also can order checks if you like. There's a fee of $6 for 25 checks. Um, there is a $2 per month fee associated with a checking account, but that fee is completely waived if you choose to have your program materials sent a lot electronically rather than through the mail, or if you have an average monthly balance of at least $250 in the checking account and there are no overdraft or return payment fees. This slide just pulls the fees together in one place just so you can see them together. Um, PA ABLE accounts are free to open. Um, there is an account maintenance fee regardless of which investment options you choose. Um, we were able to lower these fees uh, recently the fee is $14.50 quarterly if you receive information by mail, and it's lowered to $8.25 quarterly if you choose to receive program materials electronically. And I already mentioned the asset-based fees in the investment portfolios and the checking account fees. So once you put money in, you'll wanna be able to take money out even if you don't have the checking account, you can make a withdrawal from any of the investment options three different ways. You can go online and log into your account. Uh, you can call us up and ask us to write a check to your mom and we'll cut the check and we'll mail it. Um, or you can uh, do it in writing by filling out a form. If you have a checking account, then you have some added flexibility. You can withdraw from your checking account by using your debit card at a store, like we all have, I think. <laughs> you can use it just like you would a credit card and uh, make your purchase and it'll come right out of your checking account. You can make an ATM cash withdrawal or you can write a check if you purchase checks. So let's take a look at what your account can be used for. The quick answer is anything. It's your money and you can use it for whatever you want. 
But if you want to enjoy the full benefits and protections of the ABLE law, you should use it for qualified disability expenses. Um, luckily, qualified disability expenses are very broad. The federal law lists the 11 categories shown on this slide. Things like education, transportation, prevention, and wellness. Um, the IRS regulations also list basic living expenses. So as the mom of two teenagers, I really appreciate that because uh, we can use our ABLE account for uh, the children's ABLE accounts for food and clothes and, and basic things like that. Um, the IRS also specifies that uh, expenses do not need to be things that are medically necessary, nor do they need to be for the sole benefit of the person with a disability. So if I bought a computer for one child and other people in the family used it now and then, that would be okay. That could still be a qualified disability expense. So the bottom line is that qualified disability expenses are very broad. Um, it's up to the account owner or the person managing the account to um, make the decision about what's qualified. We do encourage people to save their receipts in case they are ever audited by the IRS. So since it's so broad, you might wonder, why does it matter if it's qualified or non-qualified? The first is tax consequences. So um, when you earn money in your, uh, in your ABLE account, if you use the funds for qualified disability expenses, um, then there's no tax on the earnings portion. But if I took money out, let's say I took $1,000 out and I said, this is for a non-qualified expense and 50 of that was earnings, I would have to pay tax on the $50 that was earnings, not on the whole uh, $1,000 withdrawal. Um, I would have to pay at my regular federal tax rate plus a 10% penalty, and I would have to pay um, Pennsylvania tax on the earnings as well. The second consequence of a non-qualified withdrawal is that it can affect um, federal means tested benefits. So withdrawals used for non-qualified expenses will be counted in determining eligibility. This is particularly important for SSI recipients Withdrawals used for non-qualified expenses um, can affect their benefits. Now, uh, for the next few slides, I'm going to talk about some of the rules that only apply to people receiving SSI. So under normal SSI rules, gifts can impact eligibility. For example, um, if I gave you uh, money for groceries or for your birthday, and I put the, the money in your regular bank account, that could affect your SSI benefits, uh, it could decrease your benefits. Um, but with an ABLE account, anyone at all can contribute. And as long as, uh, as long as the giver puts the money directly into the ABLE account, it won't have any effect on the person's benefits. So if I was giving you money for your birthday or for groceries, I wouldn't hand you a check or hand you cash and ask you to put it in your ABLE account. I would put it directly into your ABLE account and then it wouldn't affect your benefits. Um, also for people receiving SSI, if their ABLE account grows to be worth more than $100,000, it will be counted as an asset by the Social Security Administration um, in that uh, in, in that eventuality, um, you would need to spend down your funds to get below $100,000. And during that time that you would be spending down, your SSI benefits would be suspended, but they would not be terminated. You wouldn't have to uh, reapply. Also, your medical assistance would continue through that time, so you would still be able to see the doctor and get your prescriptions. Uh, lastly, uh, for people on SSI only, housing is a qualified disability expense, but for people on SSI, they need to pay close attention to timing. Um, if they use the money in the same calendar month that they take it out uh, to pay rent, for example, that won't affect their SSI benefits. But if they took the money out, say in February, and then pay the landlord in March, um, that could affect their SSI benefits. So um, I would take my money out in February and pay my landlord 
in February rather than carried over from one calendar month into the next. Oops. Um, and for SSI purposes, housing expenses are broader than just rent or mortgage. They also include things like um, heating fuel, sewer fees, and even garbage removal. So you will wanna keep that in mind if you receive SSI or if you're helping someone who receives SSI. This slide um, talks about what happens when an account owner passes away. So after an account owner dies, all outstanding disability expenses can be paid out by the family using the ABLE account. That includes things like medical bills, burial expenses, legal fees, um, all those sort of end of life expenses. Uh, Pennsylvania does not make a claim against a person's ABLE account while that person is alive. But after the person dies, the State Department of Human Services can make a claim and that process is the same whether or not someone has an ABLE account. Uh, no one's penalized for having ABLE. Pennsylvania is more generous than many states because Pennsylvania limits claims to funds spent after the person turned 55 years old. Um, so using my son as an example, he started receiving benefits in kindergarten. Um, if he lived to be say age 53, the state would not make a claim against his estate, even though he was receiving benefits for all those years. Um, but if he lived to be say age 57, the state could make a claim against his estate, um, but only for funds spent after his 55th birthday and only for funds um, used on nursing facility services, home and community-based services, and hospital and prescription drug services. The whole process would be um, postponed if uh, he was survived by a spouse, a child under 21, or a child with a disability. So I'll show you um, briefly what it looks like when you apply online. Um, so as a reminder, go to paable.gov um, and you could click on the enroll button. Um, I do highly encourage people to read the PA ABLE plan disclosure statement um, that's available online and in our enrollment kit, and that contains lots of important information about PA ABLE, including the objectives, risks, charges, and restrictions. So uh, let's uh, pretend that we're opening an account for, uh, let's say it's our son, Joey, um, just because that is a little more complicated than uh, opening an account for ourselves. So we would put Joey's first name and last name in here, but um, since we're the parent, we would put our email and our phone number in here because uh, if there were any questions on the account, um, they would wanna talk to the person managing the account. Um, also, I didn't say this earlier, but um, if I was managing an account on behalf of another person, let's say my pretend son, Joey, um, Joey would remain the account owner I'm just the person um, acting as fiduciary and managing the funds. But even if the person with a disability is a child, that person is the owner of the account. Okay, so now it's saying, hey, who's filling out this information this morning? Is it Joey? Is it Joey's mom? Is it another person who uh, should be able to manage funds on Joey's behalf? Um, Depending on how I answer these questions, I may get an email later requesting um, some information, some uh, documents, just proving that I'm Joey's mom or Joey's power of attorney or whatever our relationship is. Um, now it's again asking for Joey's first and last name, Joey's address. Uh, it's asking what Joey's disability is. Um, obviously, some people have more than one disability. There's no wrong answer on this question. Um, this is just the federal government collecting sort of high level uh, data on who it is who is opening ABLE accounts. Is it mostly people with say respiratory disorders or mostly people with autism? Um, so no wrong answer there. 
Um, then it's asking, hey, does Joey receive SSI or SSDI or are you self-certifying? Um, now it's asking for a state driver's license or state ID. Um, again, it's a lot like applying for a credit card or a bank account because it wants to know uh, my mom's middle or my mom's maiden name. It's asking how we would like to invest. Um, do I want to put all the money in one option or do I want to mix it up? Um, I can set these up ahead of time. So if someone else makes a contribution, um, their contribution will be uh, invested um, the way that I chose for it to be invested. Um, again, I could do this the same every time or mix it up and invest uh, differently every time if I want to. Um, now it's asking, how are we going to fund this account? Um, are we going to send in a check? Are we going to link it to our paycheck so we don't have to remember to invest because a little bit can be taken out every week or every two weeks when we get paid? Um, we can also link it to our bank account. Um, this is nice because it allows us to uh, pretty seamlessly um, move money back and forth. We can um, make a single contribution if we want to today, or we can set it up for regular contributions, say a monthly, if we wanted to, um, to you know, move money from the check from the bank account into the ABLE account. Then we wouldn't have to remember, oh yeah, I need to put some money in the ABLE account because it would happen automatically. Um, this is asking whether we prefer to receive information by U.S. mail or uh, electronically for the lower fees. Uh, we're going to create a username and a password and some security questions. Again, it's a lot like opening a bank account or a uh, credit card. So that's the overview for today. Um, I am going to stay on and answer questions, um, but I'm going to put this up too. So um, if you think of questions later, you'll know how to reach us. Um, we have a dedicated ABLE helpline, which is 855-529-ABLE. Um, and our, our email is info at paable.gov. Just going to also briefly mention our, um, if I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Okay. I'm just going to briefly mention um, our Keystone Scholars Saving Program. This is our newest saving program, and it's available to um, all babies born or adopted in Pennsylvania, um, January 1st, 2019 or beyond. And it's kind of like a starter kit for higher education. Um, it's $100 and it's going to grow as the baby grows. And um, the baby can use it uh, later when he or she attends college or trade school um, and uh, use it for tuition. Um, it's sort of just Pennsylvania's way of saying we believe in you and it's to uh, encourage families to save for higher education. I'm gonna take that off the screen and go back to the ABLE. Um, and I'm open if anyone has any questions. And if not, then we can um, actually I'll take that off. Um, Diane, we had one question um, from Susan who asks, can the representative make contributions to the ABLE account for the disabled individual? Yes. Yep. The re any representative payee, anyone at all can make contributions. Yep. That's the only question at the moment. Anyone okay. else? Well, I will hang on in case uh, people think of questions later. And I, again, I appreciate you uh, tuning in and letting me present. Great. Thank you, Diana. Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. One more question. We had uh, ahead, Chelsea Thank you. ask, is all this for Pennsylvania residents only? Oh, so many states, including ours, um, allow people from other states to have accounts um, in, in their uh, ABLE program. So if you lived in another state, you would be more than welcome to have an ABLE account. 
If you lived in Pennsylvania and then moved to another state, you could keep your ABLE account or you could roll it over into uh, an ABLE account in your new state. So you have flexibility on that too. And we have one other question. Okay, I just want to note question. Okay, before, before you take that question or give Diana that question, I did want to note, like Diana mentioned, there are maybe 30 other states that have their own version of an ABLE account. Um, so if you are out of state listening to this, just make sure you check what their rules are, because some states require Medicaid to be paid back if there's any remaining funds after the beneficiary passes away. Like Diana said, as of now, Pennsylvania does not require that, but other states may. So I just wanted to mention that. Go ahead, Maria. And also, Thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry, just to add one thing too, um, depending on, let's say you, you live in Pennsylvania and then you move to another state, um, you might want to check what benefits that state offers too, because it may help you to switch over to your new home state. There may be tax benefits or disability um, uh, benefit protections to you um, that are more uh, co not cohesive, but more, more inclusive for you if you are under the ABLE protection in your new state. So you might want to check that out if you are a Pennsylvania resident and then you move. Okay, I'll stop now. You can go to the next question. That. That's okay. Um, the next question is from Chuck. So he's asking, what is the savings limit for someone on SSDI? So for people on SSDI, um, they don't have those limitations that people on SSI have. So uh, if someone on SSDI can save up to $17,000 this year um, unless they meet those extra criteria for able to work. And someone on SSDI can save more than half a million dollars in their ABLE account. Okay, and then um, does living in another state prevent you from the tax benefits? Okay, so um, the tax benefit helps, you, well, there's two, there are, there are various tax benefits, but um, if I'm a Pennsylvania resident and I'm paying Pennsylvania taxes and I put money in a Pennsylvania ABLE, I can deduct that from my state taxable income. So if I lived in another state um, and I put money in a Pennsylvania ABLE account, it wouldn't help me in that way because I'm not paying Pennsylvania taxes. Um, the other tax benefits would remain um, so I hope I hope I answered the question. If not, uh, you can clarify if if you had another nuance of question on that. Well, I guess the question would be: Do they get any tax benefits in their own state? You know, if they're establishing it in the Pennsylvania able, you know, yes. to make yeah, a few states have um, state tax deductions. So you know, if you if you lived in another state, you could check and see if your state has a, a deduction. Yeah. And um, someone's asking about needing more info on the rep payee. Yes, their ability to establish. Is there a way of obtaining or sh would that just be calling the office? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You could call um, the number. Let me call it up again. Um, it is 855-529-2253. Um, um, and get more information on the on the representative payee rules. Okay. Um, and there again, there's what is a savings limit for someone doing this strictly by gifts and doesn't qualify for any of the SS benefits, Social Security benefits. Can you say that again? It says, what is the savings limit for someone doing this strictly by gifts and doesn't qualify for any of the Social Security benefits. So by gifts, yeah. do they mean someone else is contributing? I assume so. Per perhaps they're related to someone who isn't on any uh, Social Security benefits, which I think you did address in terms me, of the self. Let me just see if I can yeah. see the question and maybe it'll help me understand. Okay. Um, so someone who doesn't qualify for SSI um, and is receiving um, other people's funds in their ABLE account um, would be able to, their ABLE account would be able to accept $17,000 this year 
and it would be able to grow to um, more than half a million dollars total if they kept contributing over time. Let's see if there's any. Uh, it's um, the next one is: Do guardian contributions count against gift tax or estate tax gift exclusions for federal estate taxes? I'm not sure what you mean by count against. So anyone can. Um, let me think what you might be meaning. The seventeen thousand dollar limit this year is tied to the gift tax. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't count against the gift. Tax. I mean, you can, you can, I, I think the quick answer is no. <laughs> I think I'm making it more complicated than it is. It doesn't, it doesn't harm your ability to claim the gift tax federally. Okay. And um, someone clarified about the gifts idea was from family. That, that was a previous uh, question that was raised. The last question uh, that I have is what happens when the person dies and you have a rep payee? Where does that money go? Um, so regardless of whether or not the person has a rep payee, if there's a will, then um, any remaining funds in the ABLE account are um, distributed according to the will. Um, so if the person is under 55, uh, their assets would be, um, you know, combined and then dispersed according to the will. If the person is older than 55, um, you know, they would fall under that, uh, that payback, uh, to a limited degree. And then any remaining funds would be distributed according to their will. And I don't think that would be any different if they had a rep payee or not. Hey, that's the, looks like the last question that we have. And Diana, let me just confirm that number uh, for if people who had questions on the rep payee rules. Is it 1-855-529-2053? Uh, let me get it in front of me. I also want to say we will be having um, two specialized webinars coming up about the uh, the new IRS regulations. Um, and one of them is specifically for rep payees, for professional rep payees. Um, Yes. So the, the phone number is, oh gosh, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, sorry. Um, and I really ought to have the phone number memorized for how many times I've said I was going to put it in the chat box and I, I just want to make sure I wrote it down wrong. I mean, wrote um, it down correctly. 855 529-2253. Okay. Okay. I just put that in the chat box. Okay. And Thank Diane, you. if you have any information on those, those programs that are coming up and you want to send it to me, I'd be happy to share with everyone who attended today, um, you know, information on those programs, even if it's not coming up soon, you know, at some point they're, I'd be happy. To, they're, to distribute. They're, uh, this week, uh, one is on, let me just call it up on my webs on my um, I think one is Wednesday, one is Thursday. Uh, webinars, okay. All right, so um, The federal government recently updated aspects of the federal ABLE law, and these webinars will provide information about these important tax, about these important changes. Um, so the first one is Wednesday, the 22nd from noon to one, and that is for um, individuals with disabilities, family members, and um, professionals uh, the one the next day on Thursday, February 23rd is for professional representative payees um, because they have some different regulations. Um, okay. So that one is Thursday, February 23rd from noon to one. Do you have a flyer or could people find this on your website? It's on, on, PA, on it's on paable.gov. Um, I can screen share here too. It's on paable.gov um, if you click on enroll. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. 
it's unpaable.gov if you click on um, uh, webinars. So uh, if you can see that right here. Oh, okay, yeah. So there are a few different kinds of webinars on that page and you, you can scroll down to this point um, to learn about updates to the federal ABLE law. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, um, thank you for all those good questions too. I think we all probably learned a lot and I know sometimes the tax stuff can be confusing. So if, if people have availability to attend one of these webinars coming up, it might be a good idea. Um, so next up, we're going to, before we bring in um, Tony from Fund My Future Pittsburgh, we're going to bring on a uh, family member, a parent who has used the Pennsylvania ABLE program and the Fund My Future uh, program, the Fund My Future Pittsburgh program. And her name is Beverly. And Beverly, go ahead. And if you want to share your story with us, and again, when Beverly's done speaking, um, we're happy to take questions. And uh, Diana said she'll stick around if any other ABLE questions come up as well. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Can you yeah, hear me? We okay. Can. Thank you. okay. I just wanted to make sure. Hi, everyone. I am Beverly Austin. I am a parent of a child with a disability. Um, I have twins. They were born at 27 weeks. Um, and my son, Tyvel, he was born with Down syndrome and a host of health issues. And we begin our journey with, you know, just trying to figure out, or I begin my journey trying to figure out, and <laughs> you hear him in the background, um, how to have, you know, peace of mind when he gets older, as he gets older, and how to give him a safety net, um, you know, if, if I, you know, when the time comes and I'm not here to help financially or, you know, just in other aspects. My husband passed when the twins were nine months old, and that really prompted me to, you know, find a way to take care of them, you know, financially, because we know life insurance may not last long. There's a lot of stipulations, um, you know, with SSI, with the $2,000 in assets. And so I just began a journey as they were getting older, you know, as we had to relocate to another state. And as things settled, I said, how can I find a way to save, especially for my son who has disabilities? And, you know, at one point he may need to lean on SSI um, or other, you know, different type of benefits to get him through life as he gets older. So in July 2021, um, I was in a group and they, you know, were talking about a program that Ms. Tony will talk about shortly called Fund My Future. And one of the ways we could save was either, you know, through a checking or savings or we could get, you know, 529 or an ABLE account. Well, I knew for my son, we would be limited, you know, once we hit that $2,000 in savings, then if he did happen to get, you know, SSI or qualify for SSI, we would have to spend, you know, keep trying to play that spin down game. So I opened up, you know, the ABLE account. It was not difficult as Diana showed, you know, went online, um, selected my investments, filled out his information, set up, you know, what account I wanted to transfer from because I didn't want it to make her make it labor intensive or anything I really had to think about. We had so much going on. I just wanted to make sure, you know, each month the money went from our checking account and went to his ABLE account. I didn't have to do anything else once I set it up, but check it. Or if I decided to change the investment options later, I could do that. But for right now, you know, with our life and therapies and doctor's appointments, I really just wanted something very easy to do. And ABLE was very easy. Um, once I set it up, you know, the transfers have gone through each month. I get my notifications on my statements. Um, they send me my tax notif tax return or no, tax statement, excuse me, through the email. And I can go online and look at those or I can get them by mail. And so it was just very easy. And the biggest takeaway for me was it gave me a peace of mind to know that we would have that safety net and he would be taken care of, you know, should something happen to me. And as he gets older and I'm not around, he will still have that financial help to get him through everyday life and it won't impact any other benefits that we would qualify for or he would qualify for as he gets older um, and goes into the world and becomes, you know, whoever God deems him to be. So I just really wanted to have that financial security for him and fund my future, you know, really prompted that because, you know, you enter, you get tickets each month. And you can enter um, into the 
it's, I guess the giveaway as we would call it, and you can win up to a thousand dollars. And I opened it in July, 2021. And I believe I actually won $50 um, in November. So it wasn't even long before it was, you know, something that I won and I achieved. And I was very excited because, you know, as a mom, of a child with disabilities and medical issues, you get bogged down with so much stuff. So just to have a program that says, I see you and I see you saving for your child's future. And here's something to give you that, you know, that extra push, that extra cushion, and you can deposit it into your child's account so that one day it will, you know, benefit them. It was just, it's a really great program and incentive. So, you know, I encourage people if they do have children with special needs and um, disabilities, that they look into, you know, ABLE accounts or special trusts or just some way to make sure that your child is secure, you know, for their future and for expenses, because we don't know what day-to-day -day holds for us. Um, so that's just my story. I'm very grateful that the ABLE account is there. Um, the limitations are very few, and it was the easiest thing, the easiest account probably to open for us um, to get them going on their financial journey. Thank you so much, Beverly. Um, at this time, I'm going to introduce Tony uh, Coronaldi from Fund My Future Pittsburgh, and she'll tell a little bit about her program. And, um, you know, I'll let you take it from here, Tony. So this is Fund My Future, PTH. We are a children savings program. So basically, to just get into what Fund My Future PGH is, we are the only children's savings program available to families in Allegheny County. Uh, this program is for uh, families who reside in Allegheny County, and we're available to everyone. We are a prize-linked program with a monthly prize pool of over $2,000. So every month parents have, or guardians, um, they have an opportunity to win from a prize pool of over $2,000. And the breakdown with that is there's one $1,000 winner and then 29 $50 winners. And for my future, it's now an initiative of Neighborhood Allies. And we joined Neighborhood Allies in 2021, the early part of 2021. And um, as a result, our parents have access to additional resources that, that is, um, that's under the umbrella of Neighborhood Allies. And those resources include Steel Smiling. And Steel Smiling has resources for uh, various mental health um, programs. And then there's digital inclusion, which is another program where uh, families um, are connected digitally, whether it's with computers or with internet service, uh, the digital inclusion program, make sure that everyone has access to be connected digitally. And then there's the complimentary notary services that all from my future uh, PGA families, they have access to that as well. And then our presentations are conducted in person or virtual as similar as what's taking place today. And we have in-person events throughout Allegheny County um, with the many partners that we have. And without our community partners, um, we don't know how we would be able to spread this throughout Allegheny County. So here's what we stand on. This is what we stand on. And this lovely picture right here, it just always makes me smile every time I see it um, because um, these kiddos are, they had a wonderful field trip to the bank and they asked questions and they got answers. So basically, we see children and their families taking practical steps that transform aspirations into reality and build a confidence for confidence in the future. 
So it's just basic steps. It's, you know, it's just the basic, simple steps of a um, savings account. And then we see children graduating from high school familiar with the practice of power of savings. And this is instilled in students as early on as birth all the way up through their um, graduation from high school. And we believe that, uh, that saving is an American problem. It's not only specifically for uh, poor people, this is for everyone. Like everyone seems to have a, a difficulty saving and we have uh, found that to be true. And we believe in equitable resource allocation. And that is why I am out in the many communities um, promoting Fund My Future so that everyone has access to something as simple as saving. And our program is based on solid research from the fields of behavioral economics and children's savings. And that research is that children with savings accounts in their own names, they're three times more likely to go to college and four times more likely to graduate. So that is what has me committed to um, Find My Future and promoting it in the various communities that we serve. And this is a, um, excuse me, this is the uh, Find My Future team, as you can see, um, there's myself, and then there's Sarah Dillman Perry, and then there's Javier Janik. And together, we work together to make sure that um, uh, Fund My Future is available and families have access to this amazing uh, children's savings program. So now, here's how the program works. We actually, um, you know, it's very easy. You can either stop by our table and you'll notice our table because we're always having this bright green tablecloth on our table. You can't miss us. Or you can attend a virtual session such as this one. Any adult age 18 and older can enroll. And if someone already has a long-term account with the child's name on it, then you're, you're already, you're done. All you have to do now is wait for the raffle tickets to come. And when I say any adult age 18 and older, I'm talking about a grandparent because and there's a lot of uh, grandparents who are now um, having the responsibility of raising children. So a grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, anyone who has a child, they can start saving for their, their children. Um, and then for those who need additional assistance with opening the account, then that's where I step in with uh, helping the individuals set goals. Um, we'll set goals as to um, where do you want to start? Let's talk about um, uh, what type of um institution you would want to say that, whether it's a bank, a credit union, or a 529. My goal is to make sure that families are knowledgeable. I, I provide information, and then they ultimately make the decision. And then once a decision is made and they decide where they're going to um, open the account and they take the uh, step, the necessary step to establish that savings account, then they will have to maintain that account with at least a $1 deposit to be eligible to win. Um, we encourage families to share the information with their children that they've established a savings account for just so that they can be included in the whole process. And then most importantly, you cannot make withdrawals from these accounts. Um, we, we encourage parents that this is not a uh, rainy day fund account. This is a long-term savings account that you're saving for your child's future so that when that child graduates from high school, he or she will have funds available to use for their future, whether it be college, trade school, uh, starting their own business. Uh, they will have 
resources available to give them that jump start that they that they need. Now, this is the fun part. This is what um, this is why we emphasize the fun and fund my future. Uh, the families will receive a monthly raffle ticket every month on the 20th. So raffle tickets went out yesterday. <laughs> Today's the 21st and everyone receives their raffle ticket. And as long as you followed the step, you've, you've established your savings account and um, you've, you've let us know that that account has been established and you receive a raffle ticket every month on the 20th. And that raffle ticket is your chance to win on the first of the preceding month. So in this case, everyone who received their raffle ticket today will be eligible to win. Well, 30, 30 families will be eligible to win um, on the 1st of March, as long as they made a deposit of at least $1, they will be eligible to claim their prize. And you don't have to worry about remembering to go to the bank because we send you regular monthly reminders. A lot of our winners have indicated that they appreciate the reminders. Those reminders can be something as simple as a text reminder reminding you to make a deposit, um, a, a phone messaging reminder where your phone doesn't ring, but you get a message saying, hey, don't forget to make that deposit. Because in today's world, we're all so busy with life and we just want to remind families of something that they want to do anyway. And most parents appreciate that. And the last thing we want is that someone is a winner, but they did not have the time to make that deposit. So that's why we send out the reminders. And then again, there's 30 chances to win from the prize pool of over $2,000 every month. And if you were to win one month, then your name goes in the pot again for next month. There's no limit on how often you can win. In fact, we've had three time back-to-back -back winners. So we encourage families to... Make that deposit because you could be our next winner. So focusing on our in-person events, basically what we do is we, Fund My Future, will table at community partner events. And we partner with a host of community partner organizations from schools to churches to libraries we're we're partnered with a lot of community uh, organizations and they notify from my future of any upcoming events and they invite us to table and we in most cases we accept the invitation and we um, through that partnership we work with families to help educate them on the various of uh, uh, savings programs available and at the in-person events, parents have the opportunity or guardians, they have the opportunity to complete the initial enrollment. So the initial enrollment is what I just spoke about. You can sign up at the event and the enrollment process only takes about two minutes to enroll. And basically you're just signing up to be notified by Find My Future because at that time, if you don't have a savings account for your child, we will work with you to set goals so that you can accomplish that. So that is where the initial enrollment typically occurs. And in some cases, we'll have a financial institution accompany us um, outside in the various communities. So we've done that in the past and, um, and we continue to do that as well. And now that I'm under the uh, umbrella of Neighborhood Allies, we actually have Neighborhood Allies um, um, resources at the uh, community partner events that we go to. So in, in, um, 
our most recent one, we were at an event and we had Steel Smiling with us. And that was a very well-received um, partnering event. So we're looking forward to do more um, events with them. And we always have on-the-spot giveaways. We have a lot of giveaways that are at our tables and parents have a chance to, um, to get entered into various raffle drawings on the spot. So we make it really fun and exciting for families to uh, participate in Fun My Future PGH. And then there's our virtual sessions. We call it better safe than sorry. <laughs> and it's better to save than to regret not saving. And it's a three-part saving series. It's typically hosted by a community partner. So for example, if uh, one of the schools wanted to host a three-part saving series, we can do that uh, with the first session being a Find My Future PGA session. And then the following week, then there'll be an introduction to savings where a financial institution representative, such as um, someone from PA Able or Keystone Scholars or a financial institution can um, be the second part. And then for the third series, which would be um, the following week, the third week, then that would be one of our um, partners with the uh, Financial Empowerment Center. Or if the hosting a uh, community organization requests uh, something else, then we can accommodate that as well. And there have been, uh, we have the initial deposit incentive that many of our partners have considered offering to their participants. We've had um, a community partner organization that incentivized their families um, of a $25 initial uh, deposit for those who start their savings account for their children and they would deposit the initial deposit. And that seems to um, gain a lot of uh, momentum from the families because um, sometimes that's all that's needed is just to help to get started and then the parents will maintain the account. And as I mentioned before, um, we have financial institutions such as a presentation from a bank, a credit union, and then we also have PA ABLE along with Keystone Scholars and also 529s that are all presented during the um, presentation. And then we love to, um, towards the end, we love to play uh, trivia games. So it's a trivia game about uh, what you've learned throughout the whole three part saving series and a lot of families love it because they still, it's, it's kind of like that on the spot prize giveaway, but they're answering the question in that moment, but they get a prize in the mail. So they really enjoy that. And then, as I mentioned before, the on the go field trip was that, that lovely photo that I initially had on one of the uh, slides. And on the go field trips was established so that students can have that hand on uh, banking experience and giving them an opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with uh, banking representatives so that they can have an idea or a, a better understanding of what it's like to um, uh, work for a bank or even be in the presence of a financial institution because um, we can't take for granted that uh, everyone's every child has stepped foot into a financial institution because that is not always the case. Um, we've held a few um, in-person uh, field trips and everyone loves it, both the students and the staff, everyone loves it. And now we're working on uh, the uh, virtual component of a on-the-go field trip. So we're, work we're putting that together with another uh, financial institution. And this is what we are now currently working on. Every year in the month of May, we have our annual rec recognition celebration where we celebrate the family's commitment to saving. We believe that this 
um, decision that families made to save is a big decision. And not just making the decision, but sticking with it, sticking with that commitment to save. That's a big deal. That's really a big deal, especially for those who were not saving at all. And now they've made that decision to save and they stuck with it. We want to recognize them, you know, and, and let them know, like, we see you. We see you and we hear you. Just like Beverly said, we do. We see our families. Our very first uh, celebration was held in uh, 2019. And this year, we're going to be holding our 10th year anniversary. So we're going to combine it with the recognition celebration. So it's going to be an anniversary celebration all combined into one. And that date will be on Wednesday. May the 24th, and we're super excited to be kicking that off and and just gathering the families together to celebrate each other and to be recognized for savings and to have our guest speakers um, to just commend them on the amazing uh, work that they're doing with instilling savings in their child's lives. Last year, as you can see by this photo, um, we had our first lady, Michelle Ganey, as the, um, the guest speaker, and she addressed the families and just let them know how proud she was. And then right next to her is a From My Future PGH grandmother who won uh, a $1,000, and she's been committed to saving for her grandsons for many, many, many years. Um, um, while she was, has been enrolled in Fund My Future. She's been enrolled for quite some time. And then she became a Fund My Future $1,000 winner. So she was really excited about the program. And she speaks very highly of us. So save that date if you'd like to attend. Please let us know. And these are just a few photos of just, um, just maybe a handful of families who won. We love to recognize our families. And as you can see, in 2022, we had over 100 uh, full prize winners, meaning this, what, what this means is that a parent is eligible to, or, or guardian, whoever the adult is, they're eligible to claim the full prize. So if they're a $1,000 winner, they are eligible to claim the full price of the $1,000 as long as they made a deposit of at least $1. And that's the magic question. Whenever they get the phone call from me, because it is a phone call and an email, they get both. And I ask the magic question, did you make a deposit of at least $1 into your child savings account? And what I, I always want that answer to be one, I mean, to be yes, excuse me. I want it to be yes, because I want them to win. I want everyone to win. And there are cases where families say no. And oftentimes the no is because they didn't make time or they were too busy or something came up. And um, so the following month, they still get an opportunity to win. However, once they complete the survey and indicate that they did not make the deposit of at least $1, they'll still receive a uh, complimentary gift, gift card. So they'll still get a prize. Um, if they uh, if they did not make a deposit, we're still recognizing, okay, you didn't make a deposit this month, but you are saving. So here's a complimentary prize. And just remember, make a deposit. So we encourage everyone who's enrolled in the program to, to um, have an automatic feature um, enabled with that savings account. So if, if nothing else, automatically make sure that $1 is deposited into that child savings account because you don't want to miss out on your chance to win. 
And if that person were to win the thousand dollars, the check will be mailed directly to that individual who won. However, the check will be for five hundred dollars payable to the adult. The remaining five hundred dollars will be deposited into a PA able account for that child. And that is how the $1,000 is dispersed. Um, however, the, um, the winning $50 prizes, once everything is verified, the parent or adult who is the winner will receive a check in the amount of $50. So as a result, we've had over 100 full prize winners in 2022. We had five $1,000 winners and over $1,000 were was given away in consolation prizes uh, for the year of 2022. So those are the families who, for whatever reason, was unable to make a deposit. They were still able to receive a consolation prize. And for the entire month, I mean, excuse me, the entire year of 2022, we gave away over $10,000 in um in um, prize. So we're, we're really excited about the giveaways and, and how, you know, families are saving. That's the most important thing. Families are saving and we're excited about. And as we're winding down to the end, I just love this photo right here. I really do. I love it. Um, this is a photo of one of our winners. Her name is Kiki. And she is a Find My Future PGH participant with her lovely daughter. And every time I um, collect a story, because that's another thing that we ask, and of course it's voluntary, it's voluntary only. And we asked families if they would be willing to give a story. And she was willing to give a story. And we, we collect a quote. We get a quote from that parent. And this quote is, you know, how has Fund My Future changed the way you save or changed your life and your, your um, outlook on savings? And she said that it's a good way to show your children the value of saving. So now as a result of her and her daughter being enrolled in Fund My Future PGH, now her child is being instilled with this value of savings because the other component to from my future PGH is involving the child in the savings process. There's no need to keep this a secret. Children want to learn. They want to be a part of the savings process. They want to see their savings accounts. They want to know that uh, they're saving for their future and it really helps because now the, the hope is being built along with the, the funds and the savings account. And it's a great combination. So um, look at those smiles. I love it. I love it. So this is my contact information for anyone who would need to contact me, my email address, my phone number, and my cell phone number. Um, feel free to reach out to me. And if you would care to sign up for Fund My Future PGH, it only takes about two minutes to go to the website, which is fundmyfuturepgh.org. And at this time, I will stop my screen. Let's see. And see if there are any questions. Let me stop. Hey, Tony, first of all, thank you for a fantastic presentation. Your enthusiasm about this program just comes through. And I know we're kind of at Achieve a Family Trust new to working with you, but it's been such a pleasure because this program is fantastic. And for anyone that has the opportunity to win $1,000, your odds are pretty good. So I, I hope you get a lot of uh, people interested in that after today's presentation. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question, but I'm not sure if it was for you or for Diana. So maybe you both can answer um, mm -hmm. that. How old should a child or teen be before they can participate and can they manage the account themselves? So Tony, I'll let you answer that first. Okay. 
So uh, for my future PGH is for any adult, like the adult would enroll for a child. The child must be age zero, birth, age birth to age 18. So, and that, what, what that means is when a child is born, the parent can, um, would have to establish a savings account for that child. So of course you're going to have to wait for the child's vital, you know, the uh, social security numbers and things like that to come in the mail. And once that account is established, then um, that parent is eligible to receive raffle tickets. Now it goes through there. And once the child turns 18, then you're no longer eligible to win prizes in the program. So it's up until they turn 18. I hope that made sense. Absolutely. <laughs> um, with PA able, um, the person with a disability can be any age. It can be a, a preemie baby, um, even. Um, the person can take over the account themselves when they are 18. Um, so if it was a person who wanted to open and manage the account on their own behalf from the start, then they would want to wait till they're 18. Um, but an adult can open an account on behalf of a person who is, I think 14 was the age they mentioned. Um, and then that, that individual could take it over later if they're able to and want to. Great. Thank you both. Sure. Are there any other questions? Well, I don't see anything. And I know um, if anyone does have any questions after today's presentation, I know Tony had shared contact information, Diana shared contact information. I will be sending everyone the slides from today's presentation this afternoon. So you will have the contact information. And I'm going to see if I can um, share my contact information. That's always <laughs> questionable. Can you guys see my, did my contact information come up? Okay, great. Again, my name is Patty Arena and I uh, listed the contact information for myself and Maria Smith. We both work in education and outreach and Maria has been behind the scenes today answering questions and, and helping me get everything set up. So if anyone has any questions um, that, that we could answer for you or to get you in contact with Diana or Tony about any of the programs that they discussed, I'd be, you know, we would be happy to do that. So please feel free to reach out to us. And I do want to thank Beverly too for sharing her story. I'm, I'm so glad to see that these two programs worked so well for you. And, um, you know, it's, it's just always so good to hear stories from family members. So often we don't, we don't get to hear these good stories. So I'm glad that you shared that. We, we really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you guys about, um, and I think that's it for now. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. And our website is a great place to um, to visit, not only for you know information about Achieve a Family Trust, but also information on upcoming webinars that we have. You can sign up for our newsletter. And our website is also where you will find um, this webinar recorded as well as previous webinars that we've done through Achieve a Family Trust. So I encourage you to visit our website. This webinar should be posted by the end of the week, Monday at the latest. Um, I did want to share with all of you just another program, our next webinar that we have coming up on March 23rd, and that's going to be on Social Security, SSI and SSDI you know, benefits and, and working, how you can make it work for you. So um, you can visit our website to sign up for this, to register for this webinar. If you have any questions about it, you have my contact information, but I do encourage you to uh, check this program out too. We're bringing in individuals from Disability Rights Pennsylvania, um, Achieve a Family Trust, our benefits counseling program, and a representative from the Social Security Administration. And we're doing this in conjunction with the ARC of Erie County. And this is definitely a program that, you know, uh, is statewide, applies to everyone across the state. So please visit that if you get a chance. And um, and I think that's about it. Again, I want to thank everyone for attending this morning and all the good questions that we had and, and for everyone's time. So um, we look forward to hopefully seeing you at our next webinar. And I'll put up our contact information again, in case anyone um, needs that information. So unfortunately, I don't see it now. So I don't know where it went, but <laughs> I think you know how to reach us. So thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.